Ed DeRosa back with you from HRNHQ. Sarah Albadwi on the road. And neither one of us anywhere close to our focus for this video. Western Canada, Senaboya down. Sarah, they are going to give away half a million dollars in carryover money. I expect the pool to be at least two, maybe three million. Mandatory payout. Pick five. 20 cent minimum on a bull ring for some horses that probably many of these viewers are not familiar with. To me, it's what makes the horse racing puzzle so much fun. For others, I know it's a little out of their comfort zone, but maybe we can help. And HRN can help. Uh, HRN can definitely help. Hopefully we can <laughs> as well. Um, I think that in a way, people have become more familiar with these horses in this racetrack because all of the great goodies from HRN, as well as some of our other social media friends and other companies that are giving Assiniboia Downs plenty of attention that the horse racing community, I feel like, has really tuned in for this season of racing. They've had some really great days as far as handle, and hopefully we can help them close things out with a bang. Absolutely. Yeah. From a trend standpoint, without a doubt, in my mind, the torch has been passed from Mountaineer to Senaboya as sort of the early week nighttime play. Uh, certainly my handle speaks to that. I have not done much work in the pick five because typically it is a jackpot, but this is closing day. So we're going to force it out. And to me, the 20 cents is definitely a wrinkle because as someone who's played some big tickets before, you know, put together tickets with friends, et cetera. It's very easy to sort of talk yourself into, oh, I can add these horses and I can do this and that and all button. Really, no matter what the denomination is, some unfortunate strategy, I must admit. So definitely want to avoid that going into this sequence. What do you tell yourself before, you know, 20 cent, the pick four is a dollar. Uh, is that something that you focus on to try to coalesce your strategy? Um, I don't say, I don't feel as though it influences how I look at the races to begin with, but if I see a race as being a little more wide open, I might be more willing to add a horse in a place where maybe I would have tried to trim my ticket depending on the base minimum for whatever that ticket might be. And with the 20 cents, I think that if you don't have a strong opinion in one particular place, you can add a couple more horses depending on your bankroll and what your budget is for this ticket. But I agree with you that it could be a little bit of a trap to fall into because if you weren't going to add that horse for 50 cents, maybe you don't need them for 20 cents either. And maybe you can use some of those funds to play a higher base amount or multiple tickets, depending on what your strategy is for these sequences. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's paramutual. So you, I try to also think about, okay, what's my competition doing, which is you and those listening. <laughs> and me. I think, you know, they fall into the same trap I have, unfortunately, is, oh, it's, you know, this is a race I can add a horse. I'm spread anyway. And, you know, in my mind, I kind of think, well, if you really want to separate, you want to be narrow, if there's an opinion to be narrow on when others are spreading. So definitely something to keep in mind. I am happy to say on my first, I've gone through it twice. I didn't really see what I thought was an obvious single. Um, certainly some horses I like more than others, but we'll dig in and see where we agree or not. And it kicks off uh, race three, uh, 935 Eastern, 635 Pacific, $1,500 claimers, which in U.S. funds is, as of today, $1,090. So I don't know that I've ever seen a claiming race this, uh, this low. Certainly never handicapped one, but... That's what uh, mandatory payouts do. And uh, what is this? Five furlongs, so quick sprint. And one thing I've noticed, I don't know if you'd agree, Sarah, but the TTT supports it. Uh, the meet started off very forward, but you can actually close now even in these shorter sprints. Something that we've talked about frequently for the entirety of the meet is our track trends tool that you just mentioned. It's been really great for a track like Assiniboia Downs because I feel as though we have seen such a clear bias play out over time as far as the post positions, mm -hmm. early speed mattering much more earlier on in the meet, what you say about these closers now more uh, fairly being invited into the races, I think definitely rings true. And I'll pull up some graphics that show where we're at for both the dirt sprints and the longer distances here at Assiniboia. And in here, I think that you're dealing with a lot of horses that are kind of going the wrong way as far as their figures and their form. But one that is moving in a positive direction is going to be the outside horse, tough enough to start 
I feel more comfortable using some of these outside horses when we're not going a route of ground. We've seen that not be successful for races run at seven furlongs to a mile, but in the sprints, it's a little bit more fair. And I think this one um, just seems to be going in a, a good direction. She was second in both of her last two efforts. Now she's dropping in class and cutting back a little bit in distance. She did just run last week, but that's kind of how mm-hmm. things go at Assiniboia. We see these horses run very frequently. The other horse that I would want to use is time for a song because kind of that early speed, this horse is projected to be in front early on. And I think maybe this one could take them gate to wire also gets in a more advantageous inside post, but what were your thoughts and where are you going in here? Uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty similar to start. The only one I would add to that is La Chica, De Fuego it was 15 to one on the morning line and maybe going the wrong way. Unfortunately, certainly on the Brissonette scale, uh, the last two races have been worse than the lifetime best, or at least on this sheet, the best uh, 69, then a 61 57. I don't love that. Uh, and has already raced uh, six times this year to send It's just that time of year. Try to cash one last check, but at 15 to one, there are races on this one's page that are, are good enough. So I don't foresee this one as an A, but as we work through, I am a little narrower elsewhere as well. So could be one of those that wouldn't necessarily want to get beat um, if I'm right everywhere else at 15 to one, but lady sunsets nine to five on the morning line. And that's one I'm completely against. Yeah, I didn't get it with this horse. I just felt like this was one of those horses that wasn't going in the right direction. And I definitely don't want to take two short prices, one being nine to five, and then the horse to her outside being eight to five. So if I'm taking a short price in here, I'd rather take the chalk that I at least think has more of a chance to actually get things done. Yeah, I mean, if there were head to head at those odds, I would take the six for the max for sure. Uh, Stretch out a furlong for race four, leg two starts the dollar pick four. Uh, which I don't know that we've had a carryover yet in the pick four I'll meet. Certainly won't have one now because that's a mandatory payout too on uh, closing day. And uh, for me, Marky Well, seven to two on the morning line. Uh, I was kind of surprised this one wasn't made the favorite. Uh, we'll see how the betting actually shakes out. Uh, I guess the nerves are that pretty void of uh, early speed uh, and is certainly at every chance at this level multiple times. So we'll need some pace to run into. Uh, but figure wise has run its race time and again. And uh, another low eighties on the burst net scale would be good enough here. And at seven to two, I'm definitely a believer. This horse is very consistent and shows up as the one with the best late pace rating on time form. So certainly a player in this spot. This was to me one that I felt um, these contenders were most evenly matched as far as the races that we're going to talk about for the rest of the sequence. So this would probably be more of a spread race for me. But my top pick is actually going to be the one dictator. Um, This one is cutting back in distance. He hasn't gone this short actually since May of 2020. So they've been running this horse much longer distances for a considerable amount of time. And I just like that this horse is getting the rail. Obviously that advantageous one post. And it seems like this horse is in decent enough form to compete with others in this, this field. But I mean, I wouldn't talk you off of anybody here. The three Mm -hmm. and the four are a little hard to make for me, but everybody else I think has a pretty uh, fair shot to get it done here. And obviously we have to mention Big Tony as being kind of like a fan favorite that everybody sort of (laughs) developed with the Cinnaboya. And this horse has some speed too. So uh, if this horse is anywhere near five to one and three other horses are taking the bulk of the wagering action, I also want to make sure that Big Tony is on my ticket. And uh, you mentioned the four, which uh, I will just from a standpoint of uh, it actually has decent connections. Uh, Ronaldo Cumberbatch, which is, uh, you know, Big Tony is a horse favorite. I think this name has set this jockey apart uh, in the community. He's 23 percent. Uh, the trainer's 15. Uh, I don't know enough about a Senaboya as much as I watch it at least once a week, but I don't know that they automatically take money. But these are decent connections. The horse on paper, to me, looks absolutely hopeless. And I I bring all that up because I think, again, with the 20 cent minimum, people are going to be liberal with alls and, you know, these big caveman tickets. And I I agree with you. This is one of the more competitive races, even just shaving one horse where maybe elsewhere you can use another that others won't get to could make a difference with all that extra money. So uh, don't like to be overly negative. And, you know, I'm not 
splitting the atom, saying a 25 to one morning line horse is not worth using, but I'm telling myself not to use that horse because I know I'll get into the trap, but I'll just take all. And that horse looks uh, pretty overmatched. Lake three, $2,500 claimers. Uh, is race five. We've gone five. We've gone six. Now we're going five and a half furlongs for this one. And uh, I would say, in my mind, this was probably as competitive as the last one. These middle legs are, the, to me, the tougher hurdles to get through. Right. I saw this race as kind of having that same look to it, but I decided to be a little bit more narrow in my ticket in here, kind of going with a horse that I think is probably the speed of the speed in the number five Mermaid Kisses. Um, this was a winner last time out. Um, two back, the eight actually uh, faced this horse, know what I mean, and won. However, that was going... Um, a different distance. So I kind of wonder if maybe know what I mean, it is not quite the same five and a half furlong mm -hmm. specialist um, and mermaid kisses does benefit from that extra half a furlong as well. Everybody else, I kind of do see that pattern of progressively improving figures, but are they improving enough? I don't think so. Um, but the number three, good to me, this horse would benefit from a little bit of early pace. I don't know if that happens, but this horse is also cutting back from seven and a half furlongs and does drop in class in here too. So I would actually probably be pretty narrow in here and go only three and five since I'm spreading so much in that earlier race that we just talked about. Three and five, you said? Mm hmm I would add, uh, for me, the six to that uh, River Deputy, who uh, on Brisnet does probably need to improve a touch uh, if either the two you mentioned were to run their best, as well as Know What I Mean uh, is, is up there as well in terms of speed. But I thought River Deputy, there is more speed in here than the previous two races, or at least that's what I'm expecting with the outside horse having speed and figuring she'll have to go uh, if the plan is to win with know what I mean. Uh, so to me, that could help river deputy mid pack type, uh, you know, drawn somewhat outside, but with the speed should be able to get a good trip. That one scares me the most. And at eight to one, I, I definitely would want to include. That's fair enough. I mean, I saw it really is, that was kind of the key race that I wanted to focus on. And then I kind of tossed because I just don't like the fading at the extra half of furlong. But if, Maybe there's some sort of dual early. Everybody sort of gets involved into these paces. These aren't, this isn't life is good in flight line. They can back up. So yeah. looking for a horse that's going to be sitting the trip, I think is important in this race. Race number six, the penultimate uh, race, not only of the sequence, uh, but of the meet at Assiniboia. $5,000 climbers getting classier as we go on. Seven furlongs. Important to note that is two turns up in uh, Manitoba, I believe Assiniboia is in. And a rouse and go, I think, is the shortest morning line price. And I do agree, uh, probably the most likely winner of the sequence on these big carryover days. I really like to try to go beyond what everyone else is going to identify is the most likely winner. Um, so to me, uh, Miss Parfait, who I've uh, played, uh, I think, uh, several times during this meet already, uh, is my upset candidate, uh, but I, I have it down to those two here. I'm with you completely. A rouse and go kind of just seems like the speed in a paceless race. Um, I don't love post seven, but I think maybe this one can cross and clear and was a winner last time at the seven for a long distance. Um, the only question is that you took 17 to one last time from post four, which was great. Now you're getting six to five from post seven. But if you go through the rest of this field, I only saw Miss Parfait as being the one to possibly upset this favorite. She is going for her third win in a row, stretching out slightly in distance. So that's a bit of a question. But I saw this race being controlled on the front end and those two kind of going in a merry-go-round around those two turns. At a yeah. Point. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, it's, I know the, uh, the conventional wisdom is if you see the two is evenly matched, that maybe you just take a stand and go for the $10 horse over the eight, six to five. I also kind of think some of the other races are competitive enough with all the added money and the carryover and sort of the casual eyes that, you know, being too deep in an eight horse race might be good enough, especially since. In the last, uh, the two favorite, as I do as well. Yeah, uh, 
I like two steps faster. Um, I, I certainly at two to one on the line, bite the bullet, bro. Uh, who's marooned and I think marooned even going five and a half and post nine. It's a lot to ask. And I mean, people are just going to include that horse because, and, you know, certainly on paper fits a little, but I, I'd love to love to beat him. Yeah, I'm with you. I think two steps faster is to me, the horse to beat in here. This one was third to mermaid kisses last time out. The horse that I talked about earlier is liking quite a bit. Um, another one that I looked at was the number two towards the light. This horse in 66 races is 59% in the money. So I just have to respect the consistency and that this horse shows up and runs the race that uh, is expected of him. Bite the bullet bro has been kind of knocking on the door and hitting the board, but now you're taking two to one on a horse that is all the way out there in post nine. You don't see a lot of nine horse fields at Assiniboia. And part of the reason I think for that is that those post positions don't perform as well as they should. So I think that maybe if this horse was drawn closer to the inside, I would be less uh, tempted to toss this one, but I see the last the same way as you do. What about Otani? Uh, finally got a win last out. I don't know how long it had been. It's not on the page, the previous win, but, um, you know, I guess the non-winners are one condition now out of that. So at some point, that condition, which we see, I think, race three or race four has the N1Y, you know, eventually these horses are winning at the meet and they have to leave that condition, which is the case with Otani. But I see it as kind of a positive sign that even though they lost the condition, they're still running again uh, against better. And that was a big jump up speed wise. So for me, Otani, uh, I realize a little bit of a gamble because this is a much bigger step up than I think people will realize. They'll see the same claiming price and not really put much more thought into it than that. Uh, but three wins at the track and, you know, I, I guess where do you go from here anyway? And that's probably why he's running because this horse didn't run at all between seasons last year. But I see it as a positive that, that they're back off a win. I think one of the best things that you've taught me is that if you're against the favorite and you can make a case for another price horse, if your main opinion is being against the favorite, you want to make sure that you get paid on that opinion. So using somebody else that you can uh, find some positives with and want to include is never really a mistake. With Otani, I though, I, I kind of felt like this was maybe in every other sort of horse. At least it looked that way very quickly, skipping through yeah. the buyer pars. So I kind of was a little hesitant to take that one based on what happened last time going into this race. But if you are tossing bite the bullet, bullet bro, you're alive. You don't want to miss out on what could be a decent score and a mandatory payout just because you didn't include this horse. So I get what you're saying with that one. All right. Well, uh, we'll obviously have our final thoughts via the uh, the Twitter machine Wednesday night after scratches and all that. Uh, one report we don't really need to tout at Assiniboia because they all sprint on the dirt, uh, even when they're two turns, is the Sire Moose report. But uh, power picks, I have not looked at horses to single yet. Uh, I would think only the seven in race six is probably a candidate for that report, but We'll see what shows up there. But certainly after, uh, you know, yesterday's action, the the jockey stuff is updated and all that will be worth a look. But uh, I think we're going to have charting horse value as well. So those plus horses will be a, a final piece of the puzzle for me. There was a great night for charting horse value last week as well on Monday, really found some great prices. And um, I was talking about this a little bit with some other people and social media that there were a couple horses that I had no interest in whatsoever. And then after looking at the sheet for the evening, um, there, there were some prices on there that performed very well. A couple of them got bet down, but I know that he had the eight horse in the last race, whose name I'm not going to remember last Monday night. So charting horse value he was might really be on back track. here tonight. So he's somewhere in here. <laughs> they run back yes. quick. Uh, and as we, you know, with charting and there's no first, debut runners in the sequence, but I'm bringing up the first time a report because as we've seen with it, looking at the morning line versus how they actually get bet and perform huge overlay morning line wise with the five and four star ratings, which I bring up because we're charting horse value. You maybe take a look ahead to the later legs of the pick five. And if there's a horse that 
shows up at six, eight, 10 to one on the morning line, you're going to get a better, you're going to, they do get bet, but not necessarily to the level they get bet in the pick five, which in this case is an opportunity. I couldn't agree more. And it'll be free. It will be. Um, today's is free as well for Louisiana Downs. Once uh, this video is posted, I think it'll still be in time for people to access that chart. So uh, make bit. sure you're looking at today's and tomorrow's for Assiniboia. So that'll be out there for everybody to take a peek at uh, which horses are the most value and uh, which ones show up as the spot plays as well. And if you've made it this far, like and subscribe because you will want to know what is coming later this week. Uh, Sarah's going to be doing the Woodward with the guest, all of the Churchill races with the guest. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, we have a lot going on this week. I'm proud of us. <coughs> Go us. <laughs> all right, that's it uh, for this one. It's Senaboya, Wednesday night, mandatory payout pick five. I'm going to drink more tea before my throat collapses. Good luck, everybody. <laughs>